model steam parts where to buy them. I constantly receive messages from viewers asking me where I buy my steam related parts from. A while ago I even made a four part series listing my suppliers. But despite this I still receive far too many questions asking me where I get the steam parts from. This is a condensed compilation and I show clearly the various places where I buy them from. I don't really do much with small steam toys like Mamod and Willesco. They're available from a company called Forest Classics. Forest Classics sell a lot more than Willesco and Mamod steam engines and the website is well worth a visit. This Mamod traction engine however did not come from Forest Classics because it's far from new. I originally bought this traction engine via eBay for the princely sum of £25. Recently I made a short series about rebuilding it. The replacement parts that I bought for the engine all came via eBay. These images are of the engine running before I started to rebuild it. In this clip I'm outside in the garden, it's a lovely sunny day and I'm playing with a Stuart Beam engine and a 504 boiler. I bought these via eBay and I made some cosmetic modifications to the boiler and a total rebuild of the beam engine. This beam engine didn't look anything like this when I first got it. It had missing parts and some of the parts were badly made. But now as you can see it runs almost silently and it's a very nice thing to play with. This is a match made in heaven. A great combination. It's a Castle Steam V6 boiler from castleinstruments.co.uk connected to a Stuart Models 5A steam engine. This was built using castings from stuartmodels.com. Originally some of the parts from this engine were bought via a private sale. I machined and fitted the box bed, the flywheel and the reversing gear to it. This is a Southworth duplex steam water pump, just one of a range of Southworth engines water pumps. This and the following steam boiler feed pumps are from southworthengines.com which is now part of Blackgate's engineering. If you're thinking about building these type of pumps have a good look at the pictures, they are not easy to build and I don't recommend building one if you are a beginner. This is the Southworth Engines 6 inch weir type pump. This is a Southworth 12 inch steam water pump in need of some attention. This was bought via eBay and once I gave it the attention that it needed it ran very well. Southworth Engines also produce excellent castings to build things like this. This engine is called a tangy type of engine and it's available as a single or tandem compound. Why not have a look on the southworthengines.com website, there are lots more engines available and here are a few more of the pumps that are available. Don't forget though, I don't want to mislead anyone, these are pictures of completed engines. Blackgate's engineering under the heading of southworthengines.com supply castings to make them. And before anyone asks, yes you do generally need a lathe and maybe a milling machine to make these. They're quite difficult to make and not for beginners. If you want an engine that's ready to go then this may be worth a consideration. This engine is made by a Chinese company who trade under the name of Microcosm. And the website address is www.microcosm-engine.com And in my opinion for a small brass engine it's very good. I don't personally like small brass engines because they wear out quickly but for a model boat that's only going to be sailed infrequently, it's a great power plant. From what I can see by looking on the website, this company trading as Microcosm seemed to make quite a large range of top quality steam fittings. This for instance is a gas canister adapter to allow you to fill a gas tank from a commercial canister. This is a nice thing, this is a displacement lubricator with a glass sight window. It's beautifully made and if it works as good as it looks then I give this full marks for being a nice piece of equipment. I've been a customer of Blackgate's engineering for many years and when I look back most of the parts that I bought for model engineering purposes came from Blackgate's engineering. I must admit they are a bit of a cottage industry but there's nothing wrong with that. I'm basically the same. These clips show Duncan in the back room flanging boiler plates. And here they are, after the flanging job, coming out of the acid bath. This is very labour intensive, just look how the kits end up. This is a boiler kit for a speedy 5 inch gauge locomotive. I'm not going to dwell on boilers because I've never built one. 
I've built one of these though, this is a sweet P locomotive. It was a few years ago, I stretched it to 7.25 inch gauge and it was very easy to build and ran well. I didn't build the boiler but here's a boiler kit for you to look at. From Blackgates Engineering you can also buy pre-flanged front and rear parts for water tanks. The stock they carry, particularly on the casting side of the operation, is quite phenomenal. They don't just do castings and boiler plates at Blackgates, you can buy just about anything that you need. Once you've finished building your locomotive, you can buy one of these to raise steam. You will also need a couple of these, one for steam oil and one for lubricating oil. These are Rylang oil cans, really good quality. They also sell superheated steam cylinder oil and lubricating oil. This is their popular sweet pea design. And I do recommend one of these for a beginner because it makes into a nice engine and it's very easy to build relative to some of the others. They also supply castings, parts and drawings for simplex locomotives. The parts for this engine originally came from Blackgates Engineering. It's a Clarkson design of a 5 inch gauge Stirling single locomotive. The brand Clarkson is now owned by Blackgates Engineering and it also includes quite a few stationary engines too. I even bought this. What do you think this is? Before I get bombarded with messages, it's actually a set of locomotive brake blocks cast in a ring. You machine them and then just cut them out. These models need no introduction. They are of course Stuart models. And the company has been around for a long time. Stuart models are currently based in Bridport in Dorset. This is an extract from my How to Build a Model Steam Engine series where I cover the building of a Stuart Models Victoria. Watching the unboxing video from the first ever episode reminds me I really must make some more episodes of this. This series, How to Build a Model Steam Engine, is for my Patreon supporters only. If you're watching this as a public YouTube video and want to see the rest of the series, then you will have to join Patreon. If you're currently watching this on Patreon, I thank you for your kind support. I find that these Stuart Victorias are ideal for beginners because they're a bit bigger than some of the Stuart range. But you can still build one using a small lathe. The first stationary engine I ever built was a Stuart Victoria and here it is. Most of the paint that I use for painting the models that I build and renovate I buy from Blackgates Engineering and this clip shows the shelf where the paint is kept they usually have a good stock and the shelves are replenished frequently. This is the Blackgates Engineering shop counter. I buy things like this on a regular basis. Rivets, stainless steel balls and Loctite products, as well as a multitude of other bits and pieces which are generally required all of the time if you're into model engineering. You can even buy ready-made boiler bushes. On the right hand side of this clip there are lots of them. This is a Clarkson steam engine and it's one of the shop demo models. You can see the catalogues in the foreground. You can download these. In this clip I was working on a really old vintage model boat. And the wood was very badly split and cracked. So I repaired it all using something called JB Weld that I'll show you very shortly. And then I skinned it using car body filler. And here I'm rubbing it down ready for painting. You can buy car body filler from any automotive outlet or from eBay or Amazon. This remarkable material is JB Weld. It's a two pack epoxy resin and I use it very frequently for bonding wood and metal. This by the way is the 24 hour version and I usually buy it via eBay. This is a tin of panel wipe, primarily used for removing particles from a surface that's about to be painted. I buy this from a company called Auto Paint Northern. The address is on screen. As far as I'm aware, this panel wipe stuff is naphtha. It's worth mentioning that some of these companies cannot post things like this abroad, so you need to source it in your own country. This is a can of etching primer, and this stuff is really good. I also buy this from Auto Paint Northern. I've tried quite a few etching primers, and this one appears to be one of the better ones. After I painted the boiler barrel and the smoke box of my Sterling Single, this clip shows me rubbing it down with some very fine wet or dry sandpaper, and I'm using it wet. After doing this, I left the job for a while so the water could evaporate and here I'm using a paintbrush and some panel wipe to remove any particles left behind. This is my favourite paint for steam locomotives. It's HMG Paints Black Satin and it's perfect. 
It seems to spray very well onto the parts, and as it's drying it levels out. It's also quite heat resistant, and by the way it is a synthetic enamel, it's not a cellulose paint. Often when I use this paint I spray some of the contents of the can into the cap, and then I can brush paint it on as well. Don't forget to wear a spray mask when you spray paint. It looks nice and shiny, but 24 hours later it looks like this. The formulation of this paint is nearer to matte than it is to gloss, and it's just right for steam locomotives. And it always seems to give a good finish. There was a time, quite a while ago, when I used to build model steamboats for customers, and in those days not only did I use the mahogany to clad the boilers, I used the mahogany for planking the decks and most of the boat apart from the hull itself. The adhesive that I used to use all the time for this job was medium viscosity cyanoacrylate adhesive, also known as superglue. And in case you're wondering which type of varnish I use, this is Ron Seal Hard Glaze, but it's not the water-based stuff, it's the oil-based polyurethane varnish, and it's a very strong, tough finish. This is a long overdue replacement for the chuck on my Boxford lathe. The old chuck, although it was still quite accurate, was a bit too small. And before I fit the new one, I'm giving the spindle a good clean inside and out. So when I fit the new chuck, it will be accurate. And here is the new chuck, very nicely made. The first thing to go will be the chuck key spring. I really hate these. I just never leave the chuck key in the chuck. The next piece of tooling is the rotary table. I've shown this quite a few times. It's quite small and neat and swivels from vertical to horizontal and it's okay, particularly for what it costs. It seems to do everything that I need it to do. This is an interesting piece of tooling. It's part of a set of wobblers or wigglers very useful things for finding centres when you're machining. This is a small Proxon milling machine. I don't use it very often, but it can be useful for very small jobs. This also came from RDG Tools, but I didn't buy it directly. I bought it from a friend of mine who had bought it from RDG Tools. My friend used to use this for drilling circuit boards, and I didn't have a machine vice, but I bought this one, once again from RDG Tools. It's very good quality. A tool like this can also be useful for smaller drilling jobs. The drill press holds Proxon motor tools and it came complete with its own machine vise. And here you can see it's making short work of drilling holes in this piece of brass. I recently rearranged my workshop and here's a shot of all the Proxon tools that I have, quite a few really, but they are extremely useful for a variety of jobs. This one is called a Drill Doctor 750X and it's a twist drill sharpener. I bought it from Amazon.co.uk. Normally I would sharpen twist drills by hand and eye coordination and a lot of experience, but this makes it totally simple and completely foolproof. No longer do I have to use my brain or my eyesight, which is not as good as it used to be. When I'm piping exhaust systems on most small models, I will use quarter-inch pipe, and I usually use PM Research elbows. PM Research is an American company, but to save delivery time, I buy them from a company called Forest Classics in the UK. I always need to run a quarter by 40 tap through them because American quarter by 40 is a slightly different pitch to the ones in the UK. The PM Research range is quite vast really. They sell a lot of things from boilers to steam engines to generators and also these really nice little whistle and valve assemblies. They work well. This is on quite a low pressure. I fitted it to this vintage traction engine and I really think it looks good. Most of the time I use the same steam fittings. These are from a company called CME Engineering, owned and run by a friend of mine, Mr Chris English. These, along with Jubilee fittings, are really popular steam fittings. Chris's father, Don English, and his brother, David English, run Jubilee Fittings, and a few years ago they shared a workshop, and Chris used to stamp a letter C on the tops of check valves and water gauges, and that was so they didn't get the parts mixed up. The boiler in this clip has a Jubilee Fitting safety valve and a CME Engineering steam tap. Over now to tell you about Jubilee Fittings. These are a pair of injectors that David at Jubilee Fittings made specially for me. 
On this Clarkson 5 inch gauge Sterling single, the injectors are very visible. And I didn't want to use the normal hexagon type. These look a lot better in my opinion. The normal type of Jubilee fittings can be seen just about everywhere. Here's an example. This one's about 27 years old. And it's recognisable as being a Jubilee fittings injector because it has a hexagon body. But not all of Jubilee fittings are like this. Here's an example of some other types of injectors that they make. I wish my silver soldering was as good as this. These are fabricated, they are not castings. Some of them have proper flanges with little bolts that hold the flange in place. But the parts that you solder the pipe to are separate inserts. And here's a match made in heaven. Taps by CME Engineering and the injector by Jubilee Fittings. This is a Stuart 504 boiler and most of the fittings on it are actually Stuart fittings. Available from www.stuartmodels.com On this particular boiler I split the feed to the original check valve by using two CME engineering check valves on a T-piece. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.